Welcome back to episode five of Making Music in Minecraft. Now in every single episode that I've made so far, I've built a new music making machine, but in the last episode that I did, I made this piano roll here and I think things are starting to get a bit out of control. Everything is starting to get a little bit too large. Like with this one here, I had to stand in this very specific area. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to hear the notes which are playing all the way up here or all the way down here. So today, instead of carrying on the trend of making things bigger and bigger, I'm gonna be trying to make the most compact song possible. Well, the most compact song possible for me. I'm still not too efficient with redstone. There's still some really strange mechanics that I haven't got my head around yet. So because this thing is gonna be so compact, I might build the entire thing up here on top of this hill. So let's just quickly get rid of these trees by hand. Wait, that's by note block. By hand, that should be good enough for now. I'll just fill out this area here and I can get started. So I'm thinking that the way that I might do this is I might try use a really small amount of note blocks, maybe around five or so, and then I'll use pistons to push these note blocks around onto different surfaces so that I get multiple different sounds from only one note block. Now I think the only issue that I'm gonna run it, oh, that's okay. Now I think the only issue that I'm gonna have with this design is that each note block will only be able to play one pitch, but if I use different instruments with different octave ranges, it should be all right. At least it'll sound different. Now to really make sure that I make this as small as possible, I might make a little box that I have to stay inside of. This probably won't last, that will probably be too impossible for me. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, perfect. And comparators. That should be all I need to start off. I might need some redstone blocks as well. And I might actually try using observers as well. Not too sure how they work, but I'll give it a try. So to start things off, I'm just gonna do a really small test. So we'll just go like that. Is that gonna work? So we wanna go there. Now put this one on there. So I'll just put a snare drum sound in there. And then. Hmm. Maybe, can I use an observer? Is that how they work? So I flick this, it will move the note block and then the observer. Yeah, okay. That works. <laughs> that should be really easy. So if I go like that. That detects when that goes. Go like that. Is that gonna work? Yeah, okay, easy. Okay, so piston should go out. Note block will be triggered because that observer sends a signal around to the note block. And that also triggers this observer here, which comes back around triggering the snare drum. <laughs> hey, 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 that actually works. <laughs> so I'm actually already liking these observers. I've never really used them before. But this makes things extremely simple. So now I wonder if there's a way that I can re-trigger the piston so that it just keeps going in a loop. If I go like that. <laughs> I gotta turn off that piston sound, that is way too loud. But either way, that is actually working. I'm so surprised right now. <laughs> that is cool. I think the timing might be off a little bit. Let's try change that. You can actually make a variable rate song like that. That's cool. <laughs> I feel like every single day that I play Minecraft, my IQ just keeps increasing. <laughs> that is cool. Okay, now, how do I stop this? Like that, okay. So now I have my basic mechanic. I'd like to try to get a third sound in here. I wonder if I could have a piston pull it this way onto a different block. Maybe that'll work. No block will carry on the circuit. I'll just quickly try this out. Go like that. <laughs> okay, never mind. It's too big anyway, don't worry about that. Anyway, let's try to get a third instrument going. So if I put a sticky piston there, how's that gonna work? So it's going to... <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is it going so fast? I didn't even change anything. <laughs> is it just there? <laughs> what is going on? Oh, I forgot the repeater at the start. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now I wanna try to get this piston here to pull the note block over this way. Let's see if we can do that. So I'm guessing I just have it set up so once this observer goes, it will trigger this. That is going too far. 
fast. Hang on a sec. Okay, that is kind of working. I think the timing's off. I don't really know anything about piston timings or anything like that. I'm just making it all up. Hey, <laughs> that's an interesting rhythm. Whoa, <laughs> where did you come from? <laughs> oh, can you go away? I can't, I can't move around properly. Don't want to have to do this. Oh my God, <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> Dancing on my music making machine. Get out of here. There. <laughs> Okay, there we go, that works. I don't know what I did, I think I just changed that repeater. Hey, that is cool. We got a full drum track with only one note block. <laughs> oh well, I think the rhythm might be a little bit off though, it's a bit weird. No, so I guess I can really only do that unless I want to go through and change all of the other repeater timings, which might get a little bit too confusing for now, so. I'll just leave it as this drum beat for now. It sounds all right, it's not too bad. So now I'm just gonna use the same setup here to start bringing in some more instruments. I'm thinking we can put one around about here, or I guess three, because I can do three at a time. Now I might actually need to put a repeater on that because that is going a bit fast. Oh, that sounds bad. <laughs> this is stupid. Why are all these rhythms so odd? That is bad. That kind of works, but it's just playing at the same time as the kick drum. I think before I carry on bringing in some more instruments, I might need to fix up this drum beat. Make it a bit more of a basic rhythm because nothing is really going with that. It's not sounding too good. Actually, I think I just found out what my issue is. I need to swap these two notes over here. So the wood block sound needs to go in the middle and the kick drum goes there. And I think that should be it. Okay, so that is working. The kick drum is just a little bit off though. Hmm. The piston rhythm is perfectly fine, I think. I'll just quickly turn the sound up. <laughs> that sounds horrible. But yeah, the pistons are moving at the right speed. I just need to trigger the kick drum at the right time. <laughs> that is bad. It is really bad. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Oh, how do I do this? So I've been messing around with different designs for like three, about three hours now. <laughs> and I think I've finally come up with one that is actually working properly. And it is one that I can actually understand what is going on with all the timings and stuff like that. So I should just be able to place my note block right there. Then I just need to put this <laughs> there we go. That is working. And it looks completely ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that was definitely worth the three hours that that took. But now that I've got this set up, I can finally go ahead and start bringing in some more instruments because I actually understand how this one works. Kinda. I kind of understand, but that is at least better than my last setup, which I had no idea what I was doing. That was all just complete luck. Now I might actually just quickly try optimize it all because there is a lot of unnecessary stuff. There's no reason that this redstone has to come all the way around here. I was just trying to get my idea out. Okay, so that took quite a while, but I've finally finished off compacting this design down. It is exactly the same circuit as before. It has just made a whole lot smaller. I know that I probably could have made it even smaller than this, but I kept breaking it whenever I tried to do something new. So I thought I'd just leave it here. I don't really want to waste another hour trying to fix it again. So I'm just going to pull this lever, which should get the cycle going. I need to turn off those pistons. That is way too loud. And then I've just set it up, so if I want to play the sound, I just need to pull the switch here, which pushes the piston down. And it plays. Yeah. <laughs> that was well worth the six or so hours that it took me. Now, actually, that I think about it, I might put another piston right here, just so I can mute this wood block sound. That is ridiculously simple. I can't believe it. this is only one note block. It works so well. So I think that I am pretty much fully finished with this drum track here. I haven't even used up a quarter of the square yet, which is a pretty good start. I'm feeling pretty confident about this. So now I think that I can pretty much just copy over this design. I could probably even mirror it. Mirror it. Mirror it. Mirror it. So for now, I'm just completely copying over the circuit here. I can make it more efficient later on. I just need to get two of them working at the same time just to see if this design is actually going to be working properly. That seems... 
too simple. That was really easy. How did that only take me like two minutes to put together? But it took me like six hours to put this thing together. So to make sure I fire them at the exact same time, we'll just go like that and... Ah, I need to put the block down. Something's gone... Oh, wait. That one there. What's going on with this one here? Why is it only doing snare? Oh, why does this keep breaking? <laughs> oh, this is the most frustrating thing ever. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's turn off those piston sounds. That's really annoying. And now... Yay! Wow, that took forever. I didn't even know how I fixed it. I just restarted it. <laughs> I might actually just quickly swap out the instruments on this one, just as a little test. So I think we'll go for some emerald and then the other one. We'll go for some bass. Put you in. <laughs> that piston wasn't meant to be grabbing it. Oh no. Everything just keeps breaking. <laughs> How do I stop that? Mm. I actually really like that. It is so simple as well. I don't need all of this stuff here. Now, how can I make it so that it plays at a different time to the drums? Because that is a bit too straightforward. <laughs> Not like that. Gives it a little bit of swing though. What if I put one on the drums? Hey, that's actually kind of cool. That. Hey, that's kind of cool. Adding a little swing switch. It's kind of unnecessary, but it makes it a little bit more exciting at least. Okay, so I accidentally added on some swing. Now what? Now what I do? <laughs> so I think that I've finally found the perfect method for making redstone contraptions. You just need to try out completely random things for at least a few hours, break the machine at least a million times, and then all of a sudden just have everything work when you don't really know what you did. <laughs> so I've reached my five note block limit, which I mentioned at the start of the video. I think, I can't remember. <laughs> it's been too long. And I actually think that I've done a pretty decent job, even if I don't really know what is going on. So I think to help me understand all of this better, I might just quickly explain it to you. Well, try my best. Okay, so let's just mute those ones. Now I have this note block here going back and forwards, which is triggered on every single beat playing the bass sound and that harp sound. And then I've just got these two note blocks here, which are also playing the harp sound, which are just triggered by this note block. When I take these off. Yeah, that is sounding good. Now I thought that would be pretty annoying to have that as a final melody for a beat. So what I ended up doing is I have this piston here which pushes out this note block, which has an emerald block underneath it, which plays the 8-bit sound. So when I pull this switch here, it extends this piston here while retracting this one, which stops these two note blocks from playing any sound at all. And then at the same time, that pushes out this note block here, which allows it to play. But I've done something cool here. Now this was actually a complete accident, but it turned out pretty cool. So I flick the switch, the note block goes across, and then there is a little bit of a delay with this repeater which means that the emerald block can't actually be pushed over for one whole beat. So that just really helps mix it up a little bit by bringing in another instrument sound for this one note block. So now let's just enable the sound so you can hear what it sounds like when it is all running. Hopefully this doesn't break it. <laughs> I actually really like that. <laughs> I'm so surprised that I managed to do it with only five different note blocks. That is quite amazing. <laughs> I also added in a couple of other extra features which were pretty much just accidents as well, but I think they work pretty well. So we've got this switch here which pulls out the kick drum sound if you just want a snare. And then I've also got this block here which sort of acts as a delay. I don't know, it's really weird. Doesn't sound the best, but it's still interesting. And then I've still got the swing block over here, but I couldn't have it set up to control this one because I need this block to come out. So 
everything just goes out of time, so it's kind of pointless. It is actually quite funny because this little machine here is probably 10 times more complex than these massive machines all the way over here. Now, I do know that the Finnish music loop is quite short, but I still think it's pretty amazing for only having five note blocks. Now, just for a little bit of a comparison, I also made the same music loop in this big machine over here, just to show how much more compact it is and to show how little note blocks I actually had to use. I mean, at least for this one, I don't need to flick a switch for it to change to this track here, but I think that is all right. I actually quite like what I came up with. Oh, what are you doing up here? Oh, it is so hard not to break the ground. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I think that's gonna wrap it up for my super compact music making machine. I actually think that that was pretty fun, even though I spent most of the time just guessing what I was doing and having things break constantly. Now I'd actually be pretty interested in revisiting this idea later on and seeing how much more compact I can make everything because with this video here, I was still a bit confused about a lot of the stuff. Just trying to get all the piston timings and stuff like that to work really hurt my head. My brain is swole right now. <laughs> I think overall this whole thing took me like 10 or so hours to build, which is a little bit extreme for something so small, but either way, I think I still did a pretty good job and I learned some pretty interesting techniques, which I had no idea about. And I finally got to use an observer, even though I don't actually know if I needed that or not, but either way, it worked. Hey, but at least I managed to easily stay in my boundary. I still got like half the square left. Too bad I used up all the note blocks. Anyway, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Make sure to go ahead and let me know what you thought of it down in the comments and I will see all of you in the next couple of days for my next video. Might still be another Minecraft one. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye.